Um, Austin, the guy that does the science of stuff, he's uploaded a uh, syslocation science video, so I thought I'd react to that. I didn't react to the last game theory, because I had audio issues, and I didn't want to upload my reaction without my audio, so I just didn't upload it. It was okay, it was kind of just a recap of, um, help on it, so it wasn't really much of a game theory, if you ask me, but, you know, can't say stuff like that, or else people get offended, they dislike the video, and, um, it makes me sad. Anyways, the science of cislocation. Apparently it's about, like, Enno's bodysuit with, um, um, Michael Afton, so, uh, yeah. I'm really intrigued about it, actually, because I don't think anyone's really looked into that type of stuff. I believe this is the first time someone's actually gone into that, so I'm pretty excited. And while we're here, don't forget to hit that like button. Please. Dear Scott Cawthon, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Dear Scott Cawthon, it's a bit loud. Why am I here? We all know my <laughs> hatred of your games. Not that they're not, like cool and, and in fact i love the lore in the story so much that i obsessively read the wikis and watch let's plays Matt's hey it's jack on the lore i love solving puzzles but i hate visits to the hospital and lord almighty playing your games nearly gives me a heart attack every freaking time but i have an idea that was good this. just just hear me out an anxious person's edition for every game you've ever made where you have to solve all the exact same puzzles in the oh, exact same way do but that. instead of like a jump scare as a lose condition a gentle unicorn narrated by morgan <laughs> shows up and says oh shucks pal looks like you messed up would you like to give it another try i believe in you oh well, now someone's gonna make that Good job, Austin. Anyway, recently while playing through the series again because I hate myself and never want to sleep again, I hit sister location and something stood out as super strange to me and now my sleepless nights... <laughs> you got to sister location and that's when it started getting weird? I think you skipped a few games. Pouring over the weird implications of what may be one of the strangest endings to any video game ever, which is this. How on earth do you make a walking la, 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 la. human being? Get out of here, Buffalo Bill. Nobody hey. asked your opinion. Hey, okay, custom night. Don't know the ending of Sister Location is pretty dark. There are two endings, the bad one and the other bad one, both of which <laughs> essentially end the same way. The main antagonist, Eddard, a oh, fuck, dang it, not Eddard, Ennard. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Stark. Anyway, Ennard, a hybrid animatronic containing the hive minds of Funtime Freddy, Funtime Foxy, Circus Baby, and Ballora, and I, I think I think that's all of them. Anyway, Ennard About. lures you into a not at all suspicious sounding scooping room where they confess to you that this has all been a plot to escape captivity in Circus Baby's entertainment and rental. Their big plan revolves around using the scooper Got to... <laughs> scoop you out and then wear your body like a suit so they can escape without being recaptured. Yeah, now that someone says it out loud to me, I do realize just how weird this <laughs> the ending is. Ending gives you a false sense of security wherein you can avoid being lured to the scooping room. My exotic butters. Clutches and yes. Survive. However, Buttered my popcorns from all around the world. In a post credit scene, you see that, hey, doesn't matter what you do because Ennard has a skin sona and they're gonna get their skin suit no matter what you have to say on the matter. And if this were it, if this were all I had to go on, I'd just be like, gross. And then I'd move <laughs> on. But that's not all I have to go on because Scott Cawthon later released the custom night, which allowed you to play yes. several more nights of Sister Location that were even harder. Thanks for that one, pal. The nights themselves are non -canon. Oh, wait. I, I thought it was going to talk about Ultimate Custom Night. You kind of... Hmm. You goofed me there, Austin. ...rewarded with a minigame that is canon. In this minigame, you watch Eggs Benedict, a.k.a. the player character, a.k.a. Michael Afton... There you walking go. Down the I was scared I was going to say William Afton there. Outside, birds are singing, ...why is Sans here? Sans, why? ...these 
kids like you should be rotting. Oh my God, you're <laughs> rotting. That's so gross. In a series of seven cutscenes, we see the body of Michael Afton getting progressively more discolored and disfigured. Yeah, which it's culminates disgusting. In a scene where this bloated and broken body staggers to a halt and vomits up the remains of Ennard into the sewer, which is what ultimately reveals that the events of these cutscenes take place after the events of Sister Location. And yeah, fact, you right. Ennard's control of Egg Benedict's body, and it's these men. Eggs is kind of hot. <laughs> Because they raised so many more questions than the answer. Like, why is Ennard still hiding an egg's body when they've already escaped captivity? What sort of errands could Ennard possibly need to run? Do they wear the suit 24-7 or do they take it off when they get home and hang out somewhere? <laughs> but more importantly, <laughs> hanging up on a coat this, rack. how the hell does any of this work? How? My I don't know. I figured it out, and believe me, the answer to how a human skin suit puppet works is amazing. Is he gonna teach him about how to control a human? Surprising. I don't know how much I want to learn. How big is Ennard? Because you know they've got to be squishy. He's got a cannon height. Working them like a puppet. So first we gotta figure out how possible that even is, and unfortunately we don't know exactly how big Ennard is because Ennard is an amalgam of like half a dozen animatronics and we don't know how many parts are squished into their frame. That being said, we can make a pretty close estimate using the canon blueprints of Circus Baby, Ballora, Thunder, oh, we can, Foxy, and Fun Ah, uh, the heads in the scoop. Ennard, I average their heights and their weights to get a ballpark size and weight for Ennard, which comes out to 6.325 feet. I guess we won't do that. Shy of 2 meters and 300 193 pounds definitely taller than the average that is... male but this isn't necessarily a deal break huh. from the final bonus cutscene we can see that energy is capable of being like any shape so maybe it's just kind of like squished in there the bodies the oh my god hello foxy galvanized wire rope basically a bunch of wires twisted together to form a super wire cable using pixel measurements from funtime foxy who is five <laughs> 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 Funtime Foxy looks weird. It looks like Scrat from the Ice Age movies. Two feet tall, I determined the cables to have a diameter of about 23 and a half millimeters. I can't look at him the same way. An eighth of an inch and a full inch. Galvanized wire of this thickness weighs 1.485 pounds per foot, meaning there should be 264 feet feet of cable to make up a single animatronic the size of Ennard. We'll cut this down wow. to 250 feet or 76 meters to make up for any other moving parts or computational stuff. That's about 75% the length of a football field. At a density of 29.9 kilograms per cubic meter, this means the smallest uh. shape that uh. <laughs> can squish themselves down to would be about 1.779 meters across, taking up an entire volume of 5.6 Six three three cubic meters. According to the military standard for human engineering design criteria from 1989, around the time the events of FNAF take place, an average human male torso only has an internal volume of 0 0.02878 cubic meters. Oh, no matter how energy no. shapes themselves or squishes down, there's no you, you, way this ain't it. your body could fit into the chest cavity of eggs. Even more dramatically, the internal volume of the average male is only 0 0.06 cubic meters. In you're a bit chunky. Magnitude smaller than the amount of space needed by Ennard, so there's no way that all of Ennard could fit inside of one man's body. Bam! Busted! So not really busted because we have no reason oh. to believe that this is what Ennard did. Ennard could have just as easily scrapped all the parts they didn't <laughs> need in order to fit inside of Egg's body and operate it like Krang from the Ninja Turtles. After all, what's the point of having a whole mechanical body when you already have one that's made of flesh and blood right there? The real question, I think, is how, how much on earth is Ennard moving around in a dead body? I originally thought this was impossible, but after spending a week reading about the stages of death i can say that well hmm. you'll see let's go over the important parts first when you death. die oh. all cell Mario. respiration comes to a halt 
The cells responsible for pumping blood throughout your body and the heart seize up and Palor Mortis sets in, where all your blood stops moving around and drains from your capillaries. The cells of your muscles unable to produce adenosine triphosphate, the molecular energy currency due to a lack of oxygen, contract. With no ATP to signal relaxation, all of the muscles in the body stiffen entirely. This is what's called rigor mortis, literally <laughs> stiffness of death. Under normal oh, circumstances, the muscles don't unlock until the cells, unable to function properly, engage in autolysis. That is to say, they literally eat is that an orange? alive. This loosens up all the muscles and allows the joints to move again. Neat! Under normal conditions, Neat. all this happens in about a day, and up until this point, the body looks... Mostly normal, maybe a little weird. A little pale. Major rot has not set in yet, and rigor mortis can be alleviated by massaging the muscles in question. <laughs> well, why do I... You're gonna massage a corpse. I bring this up because the more I look into it, the Massaging more Massaging a corpse. And sure. A human flesh puppet like Enner does in Sister Location, it's totally plausible. Just like those dead frogs' legs can be compelled to contract by oh introducing electricity and calcium ions to the sciatic nerve or sodium ions directly to the muscles, it would uh. be totally plausible uh. for a robot animatronic to manually operate the leg muscles of eggs. It would not be easy. Anyone who's playing oh. co-op or manual Samuel can attest to the fact that manually operating body parts in synchrony is not simple, but <laughs> it is doable. What is the happening? The robot has been more or less perfectly trained at manually manipulating robotic skeletons and balancing itself so it can walk and talk and interact with children. For the first I still hate... Sorry, I still hate this guy's face. He he just looks terrifying. Skeletons and balancing itself <laughs> so it can walk really and scary. Talk, interact with children for the first few days while there's still leftover ATP and the other ions available. It could theoretically be possible for Ennard to manually stimulate the femoral nerve with electricity in order to contract and relax the rectus femoris, gluteus, tibialis, <laughs> rectus. and digitorum muscle groups in order to walk. After day two or three, though, things get a bit more. <laughs> Autolysis progresses, bacteria that ordinarily would be kept in line by the immune system start to invade the body, and leftover ions and ATP run out of energy. Muscles and other organs would stop functioning even with electrical stimulation, because on a huh. microscopic level, well, they no longer really resemble cells anymore. They're just broken masses of quickly jellifying organic material. That doesn't so look so good. At this point, rigor mortis is definitely gone. And if Ennard were to, say install motors at the hip and kneecaps they'd actually be able to walk more easily than before but then there's the problem of putrefaction the body is decomposing quickly that's Without disgusting refrigeration or embalming the collapse of a human body is fast enzymes leak from burst cells and organs combined with bacteria start to produce gases that will fill up every cavity and begin to bloat after three days and the body turns green after a week, Shrek. the organs have decayed to the point where they're liquefied. Skin would be barely hanging out of the body. Please don't show it. From green to red. And why do I bring this up? Because red. literally, we see this happen in game. Seven cutscenes in a row, where the body gets progressively more mangled. It gets a worse color. Ennard starts to have a difficult time walking properly. People are frightened. Just a few at first, probably because of the smell. And that guy, he knows what's it happening. starts to turn literally green within the exact decomposition time frame forensic experts give for an unattended body. By day six, he's turned red. Well, okay, yeah. he's turned but he's definitely changed color from green. He is nasty. That's not so hot. Seven, he was barely holding himself together. And when Ennard leaves, Eggs' body collapses as though it was literally made of liquid. The point is that this is surprising. Surprisingly, amazingly accurate. For a hack job done by a sentient animatronic with no access to embalming materials or a walk in refrigerator to delay decomposition, this is exactly what would happen at the exact <coughs> rate. As oh. it happens, it's actually <laughs> less likely that Ennard ran away from Eggs' body and rather that they literally just couldn't keep. 
amazingly accurate. For a hack job done by a sentient animatronic with no access to embalming materials or a walk-in refrigerator to delay decomposition, this is exactly what would happen at the exact same rate as it happens. It's actually less likely that Ennard ran away from Eggs' body and rather that they literally just couldn't keep the body together and walking anymore. Plus, a hmm. walking corpse is not a very good disguise. So, what you if think? you <laughs> are an animatronic yourself looking to escape in a human body? I recommend buying a giant refrigerator. They can keep bodies from decaying for weeks if need be. Also, uh, remove all the internal organs. They're just going to accelerate the rotting process. And if you can get your hand on embalming fluid, you can probably use a body for several months. Learn from Ennard. Don't rush it. Preserve your <laughs> suit and it will last Edgar. ages. Sincerely, Austin. That was pretty good. That was weird, creepy, and disgusting, but pretty good. Oh, another ad in two seconds. Luckily, I get to leave. That was really interesting. <laughs> disgusting. Yes. Interesting. Definitely. Um, I guess we've all learned something today. Um, not to follow Enud's footsteps. Uh, literally and figuratively, I guess. Yeah, that was really good. I always love the science of series just because it's so fascinating. Austin usually picks um, really interesting topics and just the science is the heck out of it so it's it's really really fun to watch and I really liked this video. So that's it. Uh, <laughs> pretty, again, disgusting, especially the part with all the frogs and the dying bodies and all that stuff, but interesting. Very, very interesting. And it's always good to go back to early FNAF games when it was complicated, yes, but still more simpler. But that's it. If you want to watch the video just without me talking, it's linked down below. Thank everyone so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.